Resort. Well, it's another day oh, on hey, the mountain. Hey, Welcome to the... my thing. What? Saying that. Well, I just thought I, I would... I mean, I just thought I would kind of freestyle and do it. I saw you thought that. Myself. So, it's another day. <laughs> all right, go ahead. And we're on the mountain working. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to do some crown molding on the cabinets that we installed yesterday. And you can do that. Yeah, and I, know Arlo, you, I know you said we, but I think you... You can do that. I know and you Arlo may even give you some pro tips. He's got tons of pro tips for 40-something years. Oh, he said, we'll see if we know any pro tips. And we're going to finish the flooring. And then we're going to go home because it's Friday. Yay. Yes. Love me some Fridays. That glue is in a different color bucket. It is. Is it the same glue? I don't know. The guy says he's been he's been selling this glue in the white bucket for 10 years. Huh. And now it's in a black bucket. So. Hey. All right. Whatever. Here's our crown molding. Let's talk about crown molding. <laughs> You want to? Okay. I don't really want to. <laughs> well, it comes in two standard angles, 45 degrees, and then 52, 38. Yeah, because right. it has two different beveled angles. Let's yeah. look at it again. See that? There's two. On this one, it's 52, 38. You can tell they're not exactly the same, but some are. And, and it's hard to tell because that's so close to 45 yeah. degrees. It is. I don't and know why they do that. I don't know. But there are special settings on the saw that are indicated that will help you cut this. Yep. And we'll show you that. And then secondly... I would say, from what I know, usually the more detailed part of the crown molding is down. Yeah, yeah so the, like, the big swooping curve would be up top. Yeah, and that's... You could do it either way, though. That's, I have seen it put on upside down everywhere. Yeah. But is it upside down? It is. Oh, it is? Oh, yeah. Okay. This, well, is, like, this is like Roman like curves and stuff. Okay, yeah, so yeah. we're going to put it on with Check the big out. swoop up. And these guys are going to do it, and they're going to give you a bunch more details about all the fun stuff in just a minute. Yay. I'm sure you can edit all that out. When you're <laughs> <done>. <laughs> all the cursing. <laughs> I'm ready to start installing the crown. Sometimes you can install it straight to the front of the face frame, but in this case, I can't because the doors come too close to the top. That is not gonna work. So what we're gonna do instead is take some of the scrap filler material and we're gonna cut it and nail it to the top of the face frame, extending the face frame, if you will, by another three quarters. Then I'm going to completely cover that with this piece of crown right here. It will go right there, kind of corner to corner with the top of the cabinet, but it will, you won't see it. You won't, you won't see that. So anyway, that's how we're gonna get around this little problem that we got. And it's also problematic in places where you have um, this little overhang on the side. If you can see that, you can, you can imagine that if you try to do crown molding around that, you either gotta notch this and make it flush with this surface, or you have to pack out this surface with a quarter inch rip strip in order to make it flush with the edge of this. So we can get around that too by just applying this piece of topper right here and put it flush with the edge of the plywood there, and that's where the crown's gonna wrap. I will say we are lucky in this case, we have room above the cabinets to the ceiling to get a nail gun or a screw gun in here and attach this. Sometimes it's so close. Let's say it was only three or four inches. You would have a really difficult time applying this piece of molding. You might have to do something else. Something crazy. I don't know what else, but something <laughs> different. Here's another good pro tip, I think. This is a good tip for anything. When you're working with a chop saw on a, on a table like this, Put some supports on both sides of the saw so that your material just lays nice and flat across and it's not tipping and falling it's out. It's like of a cut. saw extension table, basically. It is. And you can buy these that are, you know, made for chop saws, or you, you can. can just take a piece of plank and, you know, put some boards on it the same height as your uh, chop saw base. And yep. Let me see down through here, just like that. Oh yeah, here we go. Nice. Getting ready to cut the first piece of crown, so I'm gonna line up the crown upside down in the saw, and I'm gonna align this face that's the actual part that's gonna get nailed to the uh to the cabinet i'm gonna line that up with the fence on the saw and then i'm gonna take my pencil here and just get a good reference line drawn on the base of the saw now you see these holes i've actually screwed down pieces of wood uh to make like a little fence that will hold a piece there i know there are special little guides or something that some jigs. saws have i guess little jigs little holders that you can actually slide in they're made for that they're exactly for this but we don't have any so we're just gonna basically hold it in position or maybe put a clamp on here or something like that. 
If you don't like the idea of holding your crown molding tilted in the saw, an alternate method is to use these increments marked on the saw, 35.3, 31.6. You may have wondered what those are for if you've ever seen them, and it's actually for crown molding, and that accounts for the two common different angles of crown molding that are available. So you can actually lay the board flat. You would tilt the saw to one of those marks uh, this direction. Uh, let's just pick one there. And then you would actually have to tilt the head. See, the head has the same markings here. There's diamonds and squares, I think. Yeah. And you could get those two angles perfectly and cut your workpiece perfectly flat. Now, I actually don't like to do it that way. I find that it's harder for me to do it that way, but it is an option. What's your preference on that, Arlo? Uh, I will go with the vertical this way. Every time I've laid flat with the angles and the two compounds, it's it's uh, there's always some little variable that doesn't quite work out. I don't for like me. little variables. Yeah, it's like it's like something doesn't end up vertical or something, and you end up I don't know, not quite right. I'm always like trying to pull something together. <laughs> no. <laughs> I want to show you something I've noticed about this crown molding and, and I've noticed the same thing with a lot of crown molding. The back two surfaces here, they don't make 90 degrees. You Not can exactly. See, see right there. I can rotate it. I've got one side flush and the other side's gapped. If I do that side, yep. this oh, side is gapped. gapped. So they're not exactly 90 degrees. It doesn't, it doesn't want to nestle into the corner and seat itself. Like it, it's go to your home, you know, where's your home? <laughs> so that's, um, uh, that'll mess you up. Uh, no matter what you're doing, yeah, and we don't know the exact reason for that. I don't know why they would do Arlo that on purpose. Like might know. I, I'm thinking, it, could it possibly be that in a drywall corner, the mud joint is built up and they're taking into account for that? Okay, it, it could but, be. That's a you possibility. Know, crown molding was way before drywall, though. Okay, right? I don't I mean, know. I just, I'm having a hard time believing that they are unable to make this 90 degrees because that yeah. seems crazy. Um, I, there must be a purpose, and I can't figure out what it is. Maybe somebody knows. Yeah. We would love to know if anybody out there could tell us. But either way, we are going to have to pick a surface that we are going to call our vertical surface. And we're going to pick the bottom because that's the part we're going to nail through that into that piece of blocking. So no matter what this shape is up here, we're going to ignore this and just focus on lining so it up So you're going to lay this. that on the base of the saw, basically. Yes. Yeah, that to do will your be, 45s and yes, your Yes, that's going to be yeah. our reference surface. And this if, you side, don't that, you're, if you don't do that, your miters, if you laid it off of this side, yeah, your gonna, miters would come out all messed up. Yeah, well, exactly. and it'd be even worse if you did one-on-one -on -one surface right. and then you cut your next, <laughs> yeah. say your other guys yeah. out here cutting for you. You could think you're doing it right and, and it'd be all wrong. You'll be pulling your hair out trying yeah. to figure it out. Oh, my gosh. Are you thinking you did it right? And we haven't even put up one piece yet. My pro tip is actually to order plenty of extra crown molding. I always order like two or three extra pieces just in case you don't cut them right to start with. Is that right? <laughs> Wait a minute. Jeez. Let's take just a second to thank our sponsor for today's video, Vigru. And if you don't know, they are one of the world's leading sellers on Amazon for assortment kits for tools, nuts, bolts, washers, electrical connectors, anything you would need to fix just about anything. So if you are a builder or a weekend warrior or someone who just loves to tinker in your garage, you should really check out what they have available on Amazon. I'm going to show you some assortments that I have here with me today. Some of my favorite kits, of course, self-drilling plastic drywall anchors. I always need those for construction. We've got wiring, pins, and connectors, and you can actually build your own pins uh, in these connectors. Uh, we also have all kinds of sanding, discs, buffers, grinders. Uh, we have stainless steel, heavy-duty hex, and they're labeled in the box, in the lid, so you can still see what you're grabbing. And we also have hose clamps that are, uh, you know, comes with the tool you need actually install that and it has a spot in the case they also sell you know electric screwdrivers and calipers so you can see what size bolt you need to grab out of one of these boxes that's labeled so that's just a quick overview of some of the things you can get these assorted kits are so handy to have in your garage work truck workshop anywhere that you might need some obscure nut bolt washer connector and they're all labeled so you know what you have and you don't have to run down to the store and waste time when you're working on something. You can actually finish your project instead of driving around and trying to buy stuff. Thanks again to Vigru for sponsoring our video and there's links to all the different kits I had in this video in my video description, so check them out. Okay. Just bop it. Putting glue on both sides, the end grain really soaks the glue in fast.
It's hard to win, you know, with all this. It's a little tricky. I'm a oh gosh, you're taking the gun apart. Shoot it the other way. No, 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 no. Don't shoot me. That'll hold it. Hey now. That's that's I got you with this rag. Rag tag team here. Alright. <laughs> got it. How you look down there, Arlo? I'm looking pretty good right there. I'd call it. Okay. But I mean, I gotta, I got to uh, cut this thing. So. Real pro tip: I think this might be like one of the most important things I've learned doing crowns is that you need to have the piece after the one you're nailing already fitted to know that the one that you're gonna nail fits the next piece perfectly. Hmm. Th think about it for a it's second. Like you're seeing the future before. Before it you nail a piece, <laughs> you better have the next piece already cut and fitted to that piece. And you better know that that fits and then go with that one, then this one. I think you just you, said that already. Yeah, okay, I'm just saying it over and over now so that <laughs> All right. circular thinking. <laughs>light can't shine through there mainly and it also helps just attach it but that way you don't get like a ray of light shining through the bottom that kind of looks funny whose call gun is that mine <laughs> no that uh, says jamie right on no, the buddy, don't be pulling that on me <laughs> arlo is working on something else now uh we're gonna skin this side of the cabinets so it looks like all one big piece because that's a base cabinet. That's an upper cabinet on a little stand that we made. And what's weird is they look the same color in person, but on camera, Arlo, these look like two different colors, totally. It's crazy. Uh, so we're gonna put one piece that covers all that. We call that a skin. That's the back of it. Oh my gosh, they do. They do, yeah. Here's the side we're using. So it'll look like just one big unit in the end. Yeah. That's what I think. Like, look at this. The door is the same as that. This is what's different. Yeah, so we're gonna fix that, basically, <laughs> right now. <laughs> we don't have a track saw with us, so we're gonna cut this, and he's got the depth set that'll help, you know, not chip out. And we're also cutting right. from the back, oh. that'll help to not chip out. There. And he's just a pro carpenter, that'll help. <laughs> Yeah, we're trying to fit this perfect right here. It's sitting on the floor perfectly, and now we're shaving. You're just doing this because you like doing it, aren't you? I do like doing it. <laughs> Is there any other reason? Believe me, I wish I didn't have to, but... I just love and that pencil Yeah, lines. I don't think we're going to be able to use the scribe molding because those aren't the same thickness, so we're going to have to fit it like we're doing. We've got to fit side to side. Now we're cutting out where the kick is. And we're just kind of doing this one step at a time, fitting one location at a time, because we only have one piece per each side to kind of do this. So uh, that's kind of, I don't know, a safe way to do it. Yeah. We got the fit right. Time to pin it. We're gonna put up this finished toe kick piece here. We're gonna cover up a few gaps like where we had spacers here. Yep. Uh, these actually come with this finished toe kick, but if you do any modification, you gotta put the second layer on. Yep. <laughs> 
<laughs> Do you ever flip the seats up back here, or is this just tool belt? You know, um, I Area. have actually put the the seats are actually in mint condition. <laughs> They've never been used. Huh? Hey, I could slide that back in two seconds. You just hold it and pull it back. They're like mint. The seats might be worth more than the whole yeah, truck. But here's the problem: <laughs> the seat there, and then you got the seat here. Oh, that's not mint. <laughs> wow. Okay. And it's really bad if you sit on. Oh, I guess that hot wire is gone now. There's, you know, it's got electric seats. And oh. There used to be these blue heater wires. Shock so, you right in the butt while you're trying to get on the road. <laughs> yeah. ah! Well, it's been another great day well, on the mountain. Thanks for building with us today. What is going on today? What? <laughs> what? Dude, he's just freestyling you. It's been another beautiful day on the mountain. I already said that. We got the cabinets <laughs> done. The floors are almost done. They would have finished. Yeah. But I said, everybody. Stop working. It's Friday. Let's go home early. Yeah, let's do that. Thanks for building with us today, and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> <laughs> hold on just a minute. We're filming something, Ray. Yeah, we'll be done in 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Just hold, just hold <laughs> on for a second. Hey.